Hi, it's Andy. Welcome back to the Ninox Programming Training Series. We spoke in a previous video about where we put our code. We can put it at the application level, the table level, the field level, or the object level. And there were two objects. There were fields and there were formulas. If we go back and look at our products table, we'll see from the last class that we created this field called price, and then we had some field level code that allowed us to control whether or not this price field was visible. And that code said if the SKU is blank, price field is invisible, and if the product code has been provided, then the price field appears. This is a field object with code attached to it. There's another object level that we spoke about, and that is a formula itself. Now we've made a couple of enhancements to our products table. Let's take a quick look at those. We have defined a new object, which is a choice field called source. Here we have this item, and we'll just say that this is a widget. And there's two ways that we can acquire this item. We can purchase it from a vendor, or we can manufacture it in one of our factories. Let's say that we purchase widgets. So I'm going to select for example, Edison Steel as the provider of our widgets, but we have another item called a thing, and we manufacture things in our Houston factory. Now, if I want to go back to the table view and I want to see a list of all of my products and all of the sources of those products, well, I'd have to show the vendor column with the vendor name, and I'd have to show the factory column with the factory name. I don't want the name of the source of each product to be in two different places. I want it in one column in one field. So I'm going to hide those two columns. I'm going to go back into the product form and I'm going to create a formula field. This formula field is going to use the if then structure, the same structure we used to control the visibility of the price field, but instead of being a field where we provide Ninox with the content, a formula field is an object where Ninox presents us with the content. You never enter data into a formula field. You create a formula and Ninox uses that formula to create content or a result and that content, that result is presented to us. So I'm going to go into my formula option here. Optionally, I could have gone and edit and dragged a formula onto the screen. But since I'm already here setting up my form for the products table, I'll just add a formula. And it will automatically take me to my formula screen. I'm going to use the if then structure to control whether or not I display the vendor name or the factory name. As I said in a previous class, we don't necessarily want to interrogate the field itself. We want to have a variable that contains what's in the field, and we then work with the variables in our code. So I'll create a new variable, and the variable will be called x source, x telling me that it's a variable. Stack equal, or the assignment function, says that this variable, which I'm creating here on line one of my code, is going to contain the numeric value of what's in the source field. The source field is a choice field. We see that here. And there are two choices, a purchase choice or a manufacture choice. Purchase is choice one, manufacture is choice two. I have specified that I want the numeric value of what's in the field. I can see the text value, but the numeric value is either going to be a 1 or a 2. So for this formula, I will say if source equals 1, then I want to see the name of the vendor. If, however, it's not 1, and since it's a binomial choice, it has to be a 1 or a 2. The field can't be blank and there's no other options. So if it's not one, it must be two, and if it's two, 
That means that the source choice is manufacturer. So I want to see the name of the factory where we manufacture it, and I'll end my structure. Now that I have created the formula, I'm going to name this formula source display name. And let's see how that works. Here, when source is purchase, or the source field is equal to one, that would indicate that we buy it from Edison Steel. If, however, we manufacture it, we manufacture it in our Houston factory. When the source field is one, it will display the name of the vendor that supplies it. If the source field is two, it will display the name of the factory where we manufacture it. Now I'm going to see the vendor, supplier, or manufacturer here on screen. I don't need to see it a second time. So I'm going to go ahead and select this field and hide it. Last time I hit a field in the previous class, I hit it using an if-then structure. In this case, I'm just going to hide it permanently by typing the word null. I could just as easily type the word false. The point is, this field will never ever be visible here on the screen. But I can make it visible here in the table view. And now I have one column that shows me values from two different fields. When this thing is manufactured, we manufacture it in Houston. When this widget needs to be purchased, we purchase it from the vendor supplier, Edison Steel. This is a formula. The formula is calculated based on the option here. The calculation exists here in this formula field, but the formula field is not visible on the form it's only visible and only necessary here in the view. This is an example of an object that is in fact a formula. We know we can have field objects. We put data into fields and those field objects can have code attached. But the formula object is always going to contain the result of the formula. I'll see you in the next class when we start talking about structures. Visit us at www.nioxys.com. Here you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox help desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Minox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Minox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Minox community. We look forward to seeing you there.